Hello everyone, and thank you for clicking on my video. I'm going to show you how I turn this junky pontoon into an ultimate party boat. Also, how much I hurt my bank account, one thing. Along with that, I hope to give you some tips and advice, inspiration, and maybe help you decide if you want to take on a rebuild like this. Now this boat is a 2006 Bentley. Uh, Bentleys are a little bit of the nicer brand. This one has seen its better days, obviously. This is more set up for a fishing boat. It's a 240 fish, I think is what it was called. So fishing pontoon boats usually have a couple seats in the front for fishing out of. But that is not what I'm going to do for this boat. I bought this boat on the way back from dropping off my previous pontoon rebuild. I wasn't planning on buying a pontoon boat, but while I was over a couple hours away, I figured might as well look see if there's any deals. And I found this one for $2,000. Now, I knew I was going to start from scratch. This boat didn't have a motor or anything. It was in rough shape, but it did have a trailer. Wood was in decent shape. It probably could have been saved, but I was just going to redo everything anyway, along with having a center pontoon, and it's just better to start from scratch. So I ended up taking off everything and selling most of it. The fencing I sold for $200. The seats I ended up selling for another $200. I mean, these seats are in rough shape, but people like the bases and having some kind of start to it, I guess. And there were some other good pieces to it. But I was able to make a little bit of money off just selling some of that stuff. So really, this boat only cost about $1,600. The trailer I originally thought was in better shape. The more I looked at, really wasn't in that great shape. But it did last a two-hour drive, not to mention a, another eight-hour drive to Miami and back. So I guess it all worked out. But I did end up replacing a lot of parts on the trailer, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit too. A couple days after I bought this boat, I ended up finding a motor for it. Motors right now are pretty hard to find, especially four strokes or like anything that's high horsepower. Found a 115 Suzuki that I ended up putting on this boat and ended up taking off and putting on another boat. So not really going to talk about price for that. I did pay like 2500 for that, but I uh, decided to go a little bit more horsepower on this boat. So I ended up finding a 150 later. I'll talk more about that too. Uh, plans for this boat. I had big plans. Another party boat, but wanted to switch it up a little bit from my previous party boat. Wanted to have a top to it because a lot of people wanted to see what that was all about. Had a whole plan to have a collapsible top. That way I could still take it on drives, drive it easily, go underneath bridges on lakes because some of my lakes around me have bridges. So I would like to be able to go underneath them and travel from lake to lake. That didn't end up happening though. Finding someone alone to just build a top was hard enough to find, and then on top of that, I would have to have like some kind of fancy design. I had it all designed out already. I paid someone good money to design it all out, but I just could not find anyone to build it. I spent months doing it, emailed a bunch of different people, and I emailed some manufacturers too to see if they would like my design. They can keep my design if they just build it for me, and I'll still even pay for the building. And no one wanted to do it, so I just had to stick to a normal top, and then I ended up finding someone later on to build that for me. Now, starting off with the biggest purchase, I wanted to find an aluminum centered pontoon. Found one in Miami for $4,000, and then along with hardware, uh, it was in like $4,100, uh, give or take a little bit, to go get it. This was a 26-foot center pontoon, so that would fit pretty good on my 24-foot boat. Uh, motor stick out back a little bit and also this center pontoon came with a center storage area along with a gas tank spot for in front of the motor a uh, little expensive kind of a lot of expensive actually if you were going to build one yourself you'd save a lot more money but my main goal for this boat was to build it kind of quickly it ended up not turning out like that but i was going to try to build it really quickly i bought that center tune right away because it was the last one available and he sells out pretty quick so end up buying it a couple like a week after I bought the boat. So I didn't even start taking the whole thing apart yet. But first thing you do with any build, take off the seats, sell them, take off the railing, sell them, and then start tearing off this floor. All that is pretty pretty easy, just a couple screws, and I ended up cutting the wood because I'm going to replace it anyway. Pontoons and framing on this thing were in pretty good shape. I ended up replacing all the hardware because it was a little corroded. This, this boat was by the ocean, and I'm sure it was in the ocean for most of its life, as you can see from a little bit of corrosion. But the pontoons didn't leak, and they all held air, so it should have been good. I took the transom off because don't need it anymore with the center pontoon. Cleaned up the pontoons. There's a little bit of shells and algae and stuff. And I end up filling in all of these little corrosion spots with some all metal. That was 20 40 bucks or something like that. 
a uh, little bit of filler, sand it down, and I end up painting the sides. That way it all looks pretty uniform. Looks a lot better now. Along with that, the outsides of pontoons were dented, and someone had the idea of swapping them. So I ended up moving them to different sides. That way the non-dented sides were on the outside, and it looks a lot better. And I had to take off the bracing and stuff anyway, replace all the hardware. So that was all pretty easy going. Even able to do all this myself, really. I... <laughs> These, the outer pontoons aren't really that heavy, but the center pontoon is very heavy. I had to move it with the mower and everything. I follow a couple pages on Facebook. Pontoon Junkies is one. I think Ghetto Pontoons is another one. Those are both good, good sites if you have a pontoon rebuild and you're looking for parts or advice. Uh, good go-to place if you are looking for that. Uh, I saw someone recommended using this Rust-Oleum spray paint to paint your pontoons, and I decided to test it out because that's what I like doing on my channel. Test stuff out, try to save you guys some money somehow, and it actually works out really good. The paint was around $100, and then the like other material I used was another $50, so $150 for painting pontoons is pretty cheap, and it's held up pretty well. I've had this pontoon for almost a year now, a uh, couple months of using it, and paint is still in great shape. I just use it on a lake, though. I don't use it on the ocean, so maybe that will affect it somehow, but the paint holds up very well. I'm pretty impressed with it. Putting the center pontoon on now and the bracing back on, I had to line up a few spots. The center pontoon sticks out the front end a little, a little bit. I uh, didn't really love that, but I couldn't really help it. With the, with the way the bracing was set up on my pontoons already, I had to move it around so I have a lot of support for the center pontoon because that's going to be holding a lot of weight. But it all ended up working out, replaced all the hardware, got new bolts, nuts, everything, and it's basically brand new now. Time for the flooring. I was sponsored by a couple people on this build. Pontoon Stuff was a main sponsor, so they sent out all this stuff. Now, Pontoon Stuff sells a whole kit, and the whole kit costs about $1,800. It's uh, $1,803.70. They send out the flooring, the material, flooring material, and the glue, and then screws and decking and wood. They send all that out. Uh, I only used half the vinyl flooring because I was using, I was going for a different design, so used half the woven vinyl flooring and then regular vinyl flooring for the back. You'll see it here pretty soon. All the hardware to screw on everything, cut it all out, cut all the angles out for the caps and the trim. Filled in all the holes with some putty. That's all pretty easy. You just sand that down a little bit. The good thing about the vinyl flooring and like the woven vinyl is like a little foam pad so it hides a lot of like imperfections in your wood so if you want to save your wood and just go with a vinyl padded flooring it hides a lot of it and it looks pretty good it also feels really good on your feet easy to clean up i love it i love it way more than carpet i don't like carpet on pontoon boats uh, it kind of reminds me of like carpet in a bathroom you don't really do that ever <laughs> Uh, you see the flooring in the back is like a regular vinyl flooring. I wanted to go for like a bar style in the back, and in the front it was more luxurious and feels a lot good. Feels pretty good on your feet. Also cut out a hole for that center floor area, and then a floor hatch to attach on that too. I staple around the outside with some stainless steel staples. That way I don't have any shrinking or anything like that going on. No warps are in the flooring or anything. Uh, it all works out pretty good. Now for this trailer, starting work on it, I had to modify it to make it work for this center pontoon. So I had to move the ladder off to the side a little bit, move it up a little bit so it could all fit on there. Because I did make this pontoon a little bit longer. Modified the bracing. I actually got another set of stairs because I didn't like having one set of stairs on one side. And then to do that, I had to buy a whole nother trailer that ended up taking the stairs off because it was the same exact stairs welding it on this trailer, and then I fixed up that trailer and sold it and made a little bit of money, so you can count that towards that, I guess. But I really just bought the trailer for the stairs. And it looks pretty good, I think so. You can see the center pontoon sticks out a little bit further, so I had to make some room around the... So I had to make some room around the stairs to be able to <laughs> fit in there. Along with that, I want to make some bracing for the back because the motor is back there, transom sticks out the back a little bit longer. I want to have some support back there. So I ended up adding this bracing along with center pontoon bunks. Took off all that old wood because it was all falling apart. And then I figured out the uh, bunk bracings were all rusted out. So I ended up buying new ones of those along with new wiring, new, uh, new hardware, uh, a lot of new stuff. I love painting my trailers. I always paint them black. I think it looks a little bit more modern. That's not really necessary. Uh, 
but I think it looks a lot better. Bought new lights, new suspension, mounting points, all that good work. New wood. Another sponsor for this build is Gatorback. Gatorback has synthetic bunk covers for your boats. That's what I use for pretty much all my boats now because I take out my boats at night a lot, and the, they make a clear synthetic bunk cover that will light up at night if you put some LEDs underneath it, and I think it's really cool. makes it really easy to load and unload. With these bigger pontoons and shallower lakes, it makes it a little bit difficult to get the pontoon on and off, but these bunk covers make it super easy, and they last a lot longer than carpet, and I think look a lot better than carpet. So with that bunk covers, I also installed LEDs underneath all the boards, and I think it looks really cool. Top of the line lighting, because they're gonna go in and out of the water all the time, so just wanna make sure it's all good the first time around. That way I don't <laughs> that way I don't have to redo this. But it's all pretty easy to install, just a lot of screws, but it makes it pretty easy to fix if a light messes up, but it shouldn't with this high quality lights. As you see, all of it's covered, it looks really good. I think this trailer looks awesome. Installing a new winch along with that. Yeah, Gatorback.com, you can check them out too, along with pontoon stuff. Big big supporters of my channel. I love them a lot, and I support them too. You can see the LEDs light up. They look pretty awesome. I bought, <laughs> I went a little bougie and bought the RGB, so I have like every single color, red, yellow, blue, green, whatever I'm feeling for that night. Definitely not necessary, but I like to go the extra mile, and I think it looks really cool. See, it works really well in the water. Now, Pontoon Stuff just came out with a new fencing line, and I wanted to show it off for them. This is their new luxury fencing line. It cost $2,500 for this boat, and this is a bigger boat and a lot more fencing, so it's definitely cheaper for smaller boats. And if you want to do it a different way, they have different kinds of panels all made for your boat, different spots to have the gate, angled pieces, round pieces, sharper rounded pieces. I went for this layout because it made the most room, made the most sense for my layout. Along with that, their Luxury Line Seating, which is on their website now. You better get it before it sells out because it sells out fast. This time I got the Tan Luxury Line, and I think it looks pretty freaking awesome. It looks so good. Uh, all the seating and the console for the seating in the bar area, which you haven't seen yet. All that cost $3,989.90. A uh, little on the higher end side, they have some cheaper seating available. But if you guys, there's a little secret I'm going to tell you guys. If you guys... Join one of those Facebook groups. You can get a 10%, I think, 10 or 15% discount if you join their their group and use their discount code. Little little sneak peek if you guys are going to do that. So the luxury line seating will be the same price as their premium line if you use the if you use that discount code. Little secret. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you guys that, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys anyway. I love their seating. It makes it super easy. It comes with all the bases and hardware. It's just a lot easier than having them all recovered and new foam and dealing with all that. Doing all that, it might you might save like half your money, but you're also wasting months of time, and it might not turn out exactly how you want to. Uh, all the times I've had seats recovered, it's taken months, like almost a year basically, to have them recovered. They're always super busy. Up next is something very controversial in the pontoon world. It's a, it's a hit or miss, but I personally love it. I love having fire pits on my boat. Now, obviously not super safe, blah, blah, blah. People complain a lot. I get it all in the comments, you know. But I love it, and I think it looks really luxurious. <laughs> but I love it, and I love it at night when I'm out in the water with a with a date or something, you know, pretty romantic. Uh, just throw on the fire and have a little fire pit right on the water. Super cool. I keep it safe, though. I have a fire extinguisher on hand, and I build them pretty safe, I think. Last pontoon boat, I had a smaller one. This one... I wanted to build a little bit bigger, have some more cup holders, and make it a little bit more luxurious. And also wanted to build it so you guys know how to build one. I built this out of stuff you can buy online at Lowe's. You don't need a welder for it. You don't need anything like that. It's all built out of aluminum, so it's going to last for a long time. All this costs $555. A little expensive, but I think it's really cool. And I, it's going to be hit or miss for you guys. So if you guys want it, you can build it. It's all on my channel on how to build one. Not super hard, and it looks really cool. Now, this is the point of the build where I took a break. I had all seating and everything. I was waiting to find someone to build my upper deck. Months waiting. Could not find anyone. Finally, I found a guy over in Vera Beach. He asked me not to share his information because he gets a lot of business, and he gets backed up really easy. So, huge shout out to him, but I'm not going to give you his name, <laughs> I guess. I could give him a lot of business, though. 
unfortunately, he asked me not to give his name out, so I will respect that. I emailed him. He wanted me to deliver the boat in a couple weeks, so I did, and then one week later, he had it done already. Looks really good. It's exactly what I wanted. I wanted something to go along with the fencing and design, give it more of a modern look. I wasn't looking for some kind of beefy upper deck that 10 people could stand on. I just wanted something simple that people could jump off of. That's all I really wanted, and I just went for the simple route. Uh, all this cost me about $5,000. The upper deck itself cost me 4500 I went for the a little bit better aluminum. It's the more shiny stuff. I don't remember what it was called. He told me, talked me into it. It was another couple hundred dollars, but uh, he talked me into it. And then the Trex flooring was around 350 stuff like that. For It was around 350 I couldn't find the receipt again. It's my fault. But it was around that price, so the whole thing was right around $5,000 along with the hardware and all that kind of stuff, which I think is a pretty good deal. I don't think you're going to find that for any cheaper. Uh, there is a website online where you can buy an upper deck for your pontoon boat. doesn't look as modern as this, but it's around the same price, and I think it gets delivered to you if that's something you're looking for. Or you can find someone who builds custom T-tops, and that's what this guy did for 20 years, so I trust him. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, you get a couple people up there, it starts shaking a little bit, but that's going to be with anything on the water. So after I got all that done, I was back to work. I can see my hair has grown out a lot. <laughs> this was a couple months later, and I wanted to work on a bar. I psyched myself out a lot because I wanted to build some kind of really luxurious bar, and it was going to be super expensive, super time-consuming, and I just was not super thrilled about it. I didn't think people were going to want to build it because it's going to be a ton of work, a lot of fiberglass work, and I just didn't want to do it. And it's not really what my channel is about. I want to build something that you guys get inspiration from, get ideas from. And if I build it too complicated or anything like that, I think people lose interest. So I thought of this idea of making it more of a bar rustic style and using whiskey barrels. I saw these whiskey barrels on Facebook Marketplace for about $40 for a pair of them, went and bought them, and started building a bar out of them. And I think it looks really cool. It's also hit or miss. A couple people were not too happy about it. They wanted me to build the more fancy thing, but I really love how it turned out, and I think it looks really cool. And that's eventually how I got the name The Mullet, because it's a party in the back and business in the front. That's the name of the pontoon boat I ended up coming up with. Now, the bar area sits five people around it. I end up using the same seats that pontoon stuff sells. Uh, their sister company sells this this company I got the seats from is called BassBoatSeats.com. The brand of seats is called Deckmate, and that's what all pontoon stuff sells, along with their sister company, BassBoatSeats.com. That's the seats I use for the bar area. It's a little um, kind of lean-back seats. They're mainly used on bass boats, obviously. But it matches the rest of the seats. It has the same material, same color, so that's what I went for, and I think it looks really good. It fits five people around it, along with some people standing in between. I just didn't want to make up too much room. I just want to take up too much room back there because I want some more storage for coolers and everything like that for people. And that was a big problem on my last boat is there wasn't really a lot of room for coolers and people's stuff. That's one of the things I wanted to switch for this build is to have a lot more room for people and just dancing and moving and make it more of a party boat, per se, I guess. Barrel bar, I also made a little door for it so you can store some stuff underneath. That was all pretty easy and self-explanatory. It's all shown up on previous videos, so if you guys see anything you like, this is all documented on previous videos. I'm just kind of going over the price point for all this and how it all works. Along with that, I wanted to build a little wet bar to the side. I was originally thinking about doing like a sink and like grill area, build all that, but like I said, getting kind of complicated. So I went with something a little bit more simple. I wanted a little wet bar to mix your drinks on the side <clears throat> because that was something I really wanted to do on my last pontoon boat, but I kind of ran out of room. So I got another sponsor for this build. It's Keg Works, and they make this sidebar beverage system that you can dispense five different liquids, mainly liquor, that you can press a, a button and dispense your liquor right into your <laughs> right into your cup. It's a looks like a little faucet, a bunch of hoses that go down to whatever liquor you want, stored underneath this little wet bar. This whole system cost five hundred dollars and it was super easy to set up. Something you want on your boat. I shared it to one of the Facebook pages and I think I might have sold it out of them because a lot of people ended up buying uh, some sidebar systems and I think they ended up giving a discount code out after I did it. Uh, I don't know the code. I think you might be able to look it up on uh, one of the Facebook websites I told you about. Maybe be able to get a discount too and do it to your boat. They sell a couple different kinds um, of sidebar systems. One that has a little faucet and one that has like a little tiny hole that shoots out the side of something. Um, 
you can see you can check out their website and see what kind you like they also sell multiple other stuff like foot rests and a bunch of bar things uh, a good thing about this is that it has a 12 volt system too so it just hooks right up to your boat makes it really easy for a hookup on a boat i was originally going to have a keg in there too then I got into more research and talked to a couple of other people who put kegs on their boat, and they said it was a bad idea. It gets really foamy and gets expensive and just not really not really something to use on a boat. So I ended up scratching the idea and just going with the liquor dispenser because that doesn't get all foamy. That whole bar area ended up costing around $1,300. It was $1,377.95, give or take a little bit, obviously, for some stuff I missed. Uh, that was including the barrels, the wood table top, the varnish, the epoxy for the tabletop, the pedestals, the bases. The pedestals are not cheap. The, those cost $427 alone just for those little adjustable pedestals. I bought those on BassPro.com. The bases were $150. Sidebar system was $500. So right around maybe $1,400 for that whole bar area, which is not a bad price. I mean, buying seats for back there probably would have been the same price, but I think this looks a lot cooler and... Uh, definitely stands out a lot more. I think people like it, like having a little bar back there that people can play cards on and just hang out with. Moving on, now it's time for the wiring, my least favorite part of everything, because it's super time consuming. It's not hard, but it's time consuming. Uh, and I wanted to make this really complicated on myself. I wanted to have a lot of LED lights in the inside, some nice speaker systems. Uh, I just go ahead and rewire everything when I'm re rebuilding a boat. It just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to tra trace down any wires in a new wiring system from pontoon stuff is a hundred dollars i think it's like 120 dollars, and that just makes it so much easier a lot less stressful so along with all the wiring for the gauges and the switches and the docking lights uh, i also wired up a lot of the led lights i put led lights underneath the upper deck that way at night we can still be playing cards and dancing and vibing and all that kind of stuff uh did all that put color changing lights everywhere and that usually comes with switches like a remote control and I wanted to rewire all that to just have switches on the dash to make it a little bit easier. So I can light up pretty much any color I want with just a couple presses of a button on the dash itself. All that kind of got a little complicated. Took forever to wire up. Don't know if it was worth it, but I think it's really cool. And it turned out pretty good at the end of the day. The radio I bought with everything was Rockville Radio. The amp and everything is all Rockville. Some hanging lights to hang on the upper deck. All that works pretty well. It's more on the affordable side of marine speakers. Some people like it. Some people don't. I don't have a problem with Rockville. I know they're on the cheaper end. Some people don't really care for them that much, but I haven't had a problem with them yet. Actually, take that back. My radio did mess up a little bit, but they ended up sending me out a new one, and it's been perfect ever since. All of it sounds pretty good. I wasn't going for some kind of really complicated speaker system, but at the end of the day, it still cost almost $1,000 for just the radios and lights. So the whole wiring system, the dash controls the gauges all that's from pontoonstuff.com you can get those there along with their wiring harness it's all just plug and play it's super easy to hook up all that would probably only take maybe three or four hours the hardest part was hooking up all these other led lights and radio stuff so that all added up some time if you're going for something simple it wouldn't take very long but i went the hard route because that's what i usually do <laughs> Uh, the dash controls and gauges and the wiring harness was right around $1,200, and it, but along with everything else with the radio and everything, it ended up being $2,741.81, so a little expensive on the electronics. You can definitely cut back some price there if you wanted to, but I go all out, obviously. <laughs> and you can see here, it looks pretty freaking awesome. All the different colors, you can see the pink lighting with the fire pit going, it looks pretty awesome. Uh, along with the LED lights underneath, I also have LED light cup holders. Those were not cheap either. That's just a little extra stuff I bought. Uh, but I think it looks all cool. And all wiring up those was a pain in the ass. It was so hard. <laughs> and it's just tiny little wires. You get to solder all together one by one. So I uh, wouldn't recommend, but it does look pretty cool at the very end of the day. Like I said in the beginning, I originally bought a 115 Suzuki motor for this. Ended up changing that out because a lot of people said it was going to be underpowered. And also, I wanted something different, too. I ended up finding this Yamaha. It's a 2003 Yamaha 150 four-stroke. Uh, good running motor. It came off of a running boat. He, the only reason he was selling it is because he finally got in his new 200-horsepower Yamaha. So he was selling that. Bought that for... How much did I buy that for? Bought that for 3500 which is a pretty good deal especially nowadays, because you can't find anything like that anymore. It's a 2004, by the way, not a 2003. 
Uh, paint was $100. Uh, need a new paint job. Decals are free because I can do all that from my own house. Already ran good. Uh, new prop was a like $400 because I ended up buying a stainless steel prop that I put on pretty recently here. Now to hook up the rest of it, I needed to hook up the throttle cable and the steering. Went up going with hydraulic steering. Uh, normal cables, but had to replace all those cables because none of that came with it. Along with that, I needed a wiring harness and stuff. He ended up keeping his wiring harness because it worked for his uh, new boat. So I had to buy all that, but that's okay. I wanted to replace it all anyway with some new stuff. Makes it a little bit easier to sell. Good selling point when you say everything is basically brand new. Hydraulic steering, this is the first time I ever hooked that up. That was pretty easy to hook up, not super hard. Uh, along with a new steering wheel from pontoonstuff.com. The hydraulic steering was $450. The steering cables were $75 for brand new ones, and the throttle assembly was $143. Uh, all the gas hookup stuff, uh, the gas tank was, I think, $125. I ended up buying that used. The guy bought it, and it didn't fit his boat, so I ended up buying it from him. All that said and done, it ended up being around $4,571 for all the motor stuff. Motor, gas stuff, wiring, decals, paint, uh, <laughs> prop. All that was around $4,574. Uh, some final touches on the bow. I ended up adding these little bunk guides. Those were like 75 bucks on Amazon. I uh, had to re-weld some aluminum pieces. Uh, ended up welding on this little eye hook for strapping it on. Reweld some fins. That was all my first time welding aluminum. Turned out pretty good. Ended up wiring up some wireless phone chargers for the front. Pretty cool. Not necessary. Just another cool feature I wanted to add. Yeah, it is pretty much all done here. I think there's a couple other little touch-up things I did. Called some friends over for the first test drive, and we went to put it in the water, but we had to do some tree trimming first because this upper deck is pretty tall. A lot of people have asked if it's uh, over the limit of driving. No, it is not. It is like four inches underneath the limit of driving, so we're all good there. <laughs> I think it's a little bit more than four inches, but uh, it's all good. I just... I knew ahead of time that I was going to do some tree trimming to get to this boat ramp, but all my friends were really very willing to help, and that was very much appreciated. And now I can load it up by myself, load it in, uh, unload it, <laughs> whatever you call it. I can do all that by myself now that we had the now that we had did all the tree trimming. First test run uh, did not start very well. Uh, I had a little loose wire underneath, so I had to swim out. I was on I was in the truck unloading it, had to swim out and fix the wiring problem. No big deal. It was just like a loose connection, and then it started right up. The main problem was this prop I used. I just used a used prop that I had, and it ended up shredding it. Uh, here, a little advice. Uh, make sure you buy a prop that fits or for the right boat, or you're going to shred it. So I didn't want to ruin the whole day, so I ended up going back to the house and taking the prop off of my old Suzuki motor that was originally on this boat. Slapping it on there and it ended up working for the day. Couldn't go very fast because this prop is not good for it. It could go for maybe like f five, ten miles an hour before the boat was shaking really bad. I think the prop was out of whack. So I knew I just wanted to finish out the day and all these people drove for pretty far. So I didn't want to ruin the whole day from it. But that's what these tests are for, right? The bar was a big hit. Liquor bar was a big hit. Obviously, I'm not drinking, but I'm just because I'm driving the boat, but I was making drinks for everyone, so all good there. Uh, sisters jumping off the top of the boat, big hit. Water looks pretty gross. A lot of people will comment on that. Uh, evidently, people don't know about lakes in Florida. They are not the most appealing thing ever. Shots in the back, you know, it's a big hit. Where This boat has been a pretty big hit. Uh, all my pontoon boats have been a pretty big hit. <laughs> First test drive went decent. There's a couple things I want to fix. Obviously, the new prop. Uh, that was a big fix. And another complaint I had was a footrest in the back behind the bar. It was pretty awkward to sit there without a footrest. And I kind of knew that going into it, but I wanted to test it out first. And that was really the only main complaint I had about the boat is it was kind of awkward to sit back there. So end up finding the scrap metal, just made it out of regular metal. I wasn't really too concerned about making it out of aluminum. A little bit more difficult and a little bit more expensive, and this was free. So, <laughs> so I just made it out of metal, painted it up, put some grip tape on it and it all looks pretty good works a lot better also installed this uh, old grill i had because i wanted to have a grill on it for cookouts and easy as that also along with that i need to adjust some of the throttle stuff which is to be expected whenever you're 
putting a new motor on a boat. You kind of have to adjust some things. Next test drive was with my dad, just hanging out. My hair is so long. My hair is not that long anymore, guys. I ended up cutting it off. <laughs> and it was going good. I was going around, I think, 22 miles an hour. And I think I can get a lot more of that now with this new prop. I haven't tested it out yet. But uh, it was going pretty well. And my dad likes the boat, too. Uh, I tried to convince him into buying it, but uh, he is uh, low-balling me right now, so... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to end up selling it to someone else. Some cool drone shots, you know. Uh, I had my dad drive while I did the drone shots. A little relaxing. You see how awesome the fire pit is. I'm not going to mention that it's 95 degrees out right now. <laughs> but you can see how cool it will be if during the winter months you can still go out on your boat, especially in Florida. Loading the boat is easy. Now, a couple days later, invited some more friends out. I wanted to test how many people I could fit on the boat, and I think I ended up fitting like 12 or 13 people on the boat with plenty of room. It was pretty roomy in there, and the boat handled awesome with all these people on it. People jumping off the top uh, had probably like four or 500 pounds of people at the top. Shook a little bit, but it was perfectly fine. It handled pretty well. We put it to the test because I don't want to sell anything if I don't fully trust it. You see people relaxing, people are drinking. It's a, it's a fun time for sure. My friends are pretty great. One thing I want to comment about that is I do get a lot of comments and I want to kind of stick up for my friends here. Uh, people like to complain and say that my friends use me for my own stuff and that is not the case at all. I think people kind of forget that this is my job and other people, my friends, have their own jobs too. I, they're not to my disposal 24-7. They help when I need it and they are more than willing to help all the time. Literally one text away and I can have multiple friends here. My friends are really great. They will be here <laughs> without any question to help out with anything. So got to stick up for them a little bit. But I do do all this work by myself for a reason. One, don't really like working with other people. Uh, just a personal thing. I like to do my own stuff. And if I have more people here, then it just complicates things. Another thing is, this is for YouTube. I want to inspire people and give them motivation that they can do this by themselves. I am not a very big, strong guy. And I was able to rebuild this whole pontoon pretty much by myself. I had a couple of people help me with the motor. And I ended up, I installed this massive center tune by myself. You can do it by yourself. It's, it's all very possible. All right, little side note rant there. Just want to stick up for my friends because they do get a, comment, a lot of comments like that. So the total price for building this pontoon, tritune now with an upper deck, is $31,546.79 is what I have written out. Uh, might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less. You could definitely save some money in some certain areas. Don't go too extravagant on some of the stuff I did. If you have some good fencing already that you want to keep, and you can do that, save some money. Same thing with seats. Uh, same thing with flooring. You know, you can save some money there. Uh, obviously with the trailer, I spent a, quite a bit of money on the trailer. The upper deck was expensive. That's definitely not necessary. But, this is a basically brand new boat for $31,000. The only thing that is used on this boat is the motor and the outer pontoons and the bracing. Everything else on this boat is brand new. Batteries, wiring, hardware, everything is brand new. Now with all that being said, this boat is for sale. A lot of people have asked me pricing wise and I want to figure that out too right now. I have an idea, but I want to kind of give you guys my reasoning for the pricing. And to justify my pricing, you got to look at the comps around the area. I think that's a normal thing to do, right? <laughs> so these are some pontoons I found on Facebook Marketplace around my area. I live in Central Florida, so pontoons are pretty popular around the lake. This one is sold. This is a 2016 Bennington. Uh, Bennington is top of the line. So that being said, this is a 22 foot, 115, so a little bit smaller motor, but obviously it's a little bit newer. This is a six-year-old pontoon. Take with that whatever information you want to. It is a tritune also, so keep that in mind. And it sold for almost $35,000. The difference between this and mine is mine is a little bit bigger. Obviously, it's going to be registered as a 2006, but it is all brand new, all new seating. And it has an upper deck along with a bar. A lot of custom work, you know, I can't really price all that out because it's all personal preference stuff. Uh, me personally, I prefer having a bar in the back overseeding but I am on the younger side and I like to party a little bit so 
it's kind of hard to judge pricing wise. Next pontoon I found is a little bit cheaper, but it's also 10 years old. It is a 24 foot uh, Avalon. Avalon is not a bad brand either. I don't, I'm kind of making this up as I go along. I know Bentley or Bennington is a pretty good brand. Avalon, I've seen around a lot. Don't really know what's top of the line or anything. This is just a regular pontoon boat though. There's no center tune or anything. It also has a 115 motor on it. That is obviously a little bit newer, but it's not very pretty in the inside. It's pretty bland. It's I think it's set up for fishing. Uh, not very much seating. It probably fits around 10 people at the most, but it does have a power pole. I guess that's a good point. This one is $25,000 and it is sold now. It was pending when I took these pictures. Next up is this 2010 South Bay. Uh, I've never heard of that brand before, but it looks pretty nice. Uh, it's got a 150 on the back, same as mine. Uh, a little bit newer, obviously, but the pontoons look kind of rough. They definitely need some new paint, but it does have a center tune. And this is labeled as the luxury line, so it has some pretty nice seating. The seating looks pretty good for being 10 years old. It has that center storage area, just like my boat. Good radio, has a wash down area. A lot of seating. It probably sits right around the same amount of people as my boat. But it doesn't have a fire pit, you know. You know, that's worth quite a bit to me. <laughs> uh, this one is probably closest to what is comparable to my boat. Obviously, it's 12 years old. So seats are probably worn in a little bit more. I'm not sure if there's any rips or anything in it. It doesn't say there is. Uh, but it has a vinyl flooring, ski locker. Uh, engine has 543 hours on it. I do not know how many hours are on, this, on my engine. I don't know. I bought it used. The guy I bought it from also bought it used. It's not really a, a green flag or anything, but it runs very strong, and it was very well taken care of. I even changed the oil pretty recently in it, too. Uh, this one's still for sale. It's at a dealership, so obviously it's going to be priced a little bit more. Lastly is this 2021 Berkshire Saltwater Series. I think it's 2019 because by the pictures, you can tell it's in. it's been used quite a bit. This one also sits right around the same amount of people as me. I think it's the same size. Let me look at it real quick. It uh, doesn't really have a whole lot of information. It's a 200 horsepower Suzuki, obviously newer than mine. Uh, double Benemy tops. At, I think it sits right around the same amount of people as me, around 13. It's like three years old. I can't tell. I can't tell if it's a tritune or not. The pictures don't really tell me if it is. And I don't know enough about this model to be able to tell yes or no. I don't think it is. Usually that's a good selling point, so I think it would be listed. Uh, as you can tell by the pictures, it is... Uh, well, well loved, well, well used, and they are asking fifty five thousand dollars for it. I don't know if they're going to get that. I sure would not pay that much for it. But just trying to price out stuff, and it's obviously not sold yet. And it's still not sold. I've just checked currently. So those are the comps around my area. Don't really know how to judge my boat on pricing wise. None of these have upper decks, or a bar, or a lot of other stuff that my boat has. They're also newer than my boat so also something to deal with with insurance and stuff like that and getting a loan on my boat with all that being said the price point i know what you guys are wanting to know i'm thinking around 39 39 almost forty thousand dollars i'm thinking around the price point uh you might be able to talk me in the lower you know i would like to make a little bit of money on this pontoon i definitely think my labor of love was worth more than eight thousand dollars less than that but that's something you gotta do when you have my career you know i'm just trying to help people out give people inspiration and motivation to build their own pontoons and obviously you're gonna save some money if you do it yourself but this pontoon took me nine months no almost 11 months to build just telling you guys straight up how it is if you're gonna build your own pontoon you're gonna save some money but you gotta put in the work so right now asking thirty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars if you are interested in buying it or interesting in taking it for a test drive know anything about it my email is down below also my instagram you check me out there if you are very serious guys i am in central florida i'm not shipping this anywhere cash only do not send me trade offers i this is going to fund future projects for my channel uh and also if you guys are really serious just email me if i get a lot of emails guys please don't spam me with emails i love you guys but trying to keep some kind of boundaries okay uh, i had to deal with stalkers occasionally and it's just not fun to deal with it's very awkward so please please just be normal <laughs>
All right, guys, this is pretty much the whole build from start to finish. Tell me if you like it. Tell me if you hate it. You know, you're not going to hurt my feelings, just maybe a little bit. But I, I'm i getting t tougher skin now being on YouTube. I was pretty sensitive back in the day, but YouTube has made me very desensitized to a lot of stuff, a lot of mean comments. I enjoyed this build, and I enjoy you guys watching everything I do, and I hope you guys continue to follow me. I know I haven't posted for a while, and something I've been dealing with personally. I don't really want to get into it. Uh, I might mention it down in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. You can check out my Instagram, check out other stuff, and there is more videos to come. I promise you that. I have a new project. Once I sell this boat, there's going to be plenty more projects because this is going to fund a lot of stuff in the future. Uh, more boats. Maybe switch it up from pontoon boats. Maybe do a fishing boat. I don't fish very much, so I would like to take that on. See what it's all about and maybe try some stuff. I will catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching my build. Bye.